You know what's nice about the spear vision? You know, during the summer, you know, it's hot, man, and you know, whether it's fishing or just, you know, doing whatever, you know, it can be hot, so to go out and jump in the water, and we love to hunt, so that's, you know, it's kind of got the hunting aspect and the fishing aspect together. Um, just a fun thing to do. Yeah, well, it, in the summertime, it is hot. I mean, if you get, get in the water and get out, it feels so much cooler than just sitting there fishing. But I, I think it's fun to do a little of both, you know, to fish some, to get in the water, spear fish, lobster. I mean, there's just so much to do down here that's associated with the water, whether you're on top of it or underneath it, that, man, it's, it's a good time to, to take advantage of that. Wow, that is super clear. Man, that is some clear water. We are gonna see them good in here. We on the spot, Reed? I think so. Getting close, huh? Yep. Man, it's beautiful up here. Okay, what's the program? What do we do? Well, I'd say uh, for the, for these first couple spots, let's just send Reed in real quick to see if they're here. And um, the, if there's, a, I know these couple spots had a red groupers that were kind of borderline, yep. and we could just um, rod and reel a couple of those. Or if he finds a black, he'll try to chase them and hold them up, and then we'll get in. And, and uh, try to get them. Okay. Reed is, dude, he is all about it. I mean, he is excited about it, loves it. You can just tell. Man, that was a pleasure. You know, he knew you were coming down. He, was, he, he really wanted to, uh, you know, show that to you and to be able to, you know, you know take you spear fishing to the point where we went out scouting a couple days before. We went out and, you know, did these areas and, and he held back, you know. <laughs> he, he didn't he shoot did. them all <laughs> because he normally he shoots them that's, all. But, that's um, hard to believe. Try like this first. I think I see him right there. So we started doing a couple of different things there. It wasn't entirely a spear fishing trip. Like one of the techniques that you guys have that's kind of cool is like if there's one that looks kind of borderline, you can have Reed take the bait over there and put it down there. Okay, you see him, Reed? You gonna take it down there? Because I saw that there were some red groupers in there and you could see that they wanted to eat. They were like, ooh, I want that, but I'm not getting away from this hole very yeah. far. Well, this is the best fish finder I've ever seen. And then Reed would take it over there a little bit and drop it, and he would come and eat it immediately. Immediately, yeah. There's like a certain range, you know, like a certain yeah. amount of feet, you know? Yeah. Please, Aiden, give me a second, give me a second. Let me slow it. Go, go. <laughs> Reed, that's pretty awesome, dude. <laughs> that's pretty awesome, Reed. Right on, man. Oh, man. Look at that. Reed, you're the man. So that was that was super cool to kind of watch that, and uh, you know that's also a really good way for anyone that's going to spearfish a kid or an adult or whoever to really be able to like look at a fish and go, man, I don't know if that's legal or not. So the only way you're going to know is you're going to you're going to spearfish it, right? You're going to shoot it unless you catch it, measure it, and you're like that one's 25 inches. Yes. So keep a mental right. picture of now what 25 you, yeah. inches looks like. So I'm going to base everything that I see on that one right yep. there that's, that I know is... You have a little scale to work right. off of. He's legal. He's legal. Right on. We want to keep him? Yep. OK. Awesome. All right. Well, Reed, good job, dude. You're the best fishing guide I've ever seen in my life. say we can go any which direction you know we can go straight out we can go down to Key West um, we rarely go up north you know because honestly the fishing is so much better like right here as far as the rod and reel fishing but this you know for the diving and for the spear fishing going north is a good option and we ran uh, you know about 30 miles north of here you know we've gone up there a few times for, for different things for sailfish and for some different different things here and there when it's better but the water clarity up there is really worth the ride sometimes beautiful reefs up there uh, molasses reef pickles just a whole bunch of different reefs up there that are just gorgeous the spear fishing limits um, once you get up north there you have to be at least three miles offshore um, so most of the spots we were hitting were four to five miles out um, but not on these big reefs we usually find the best action as far as the grouper and the snappers and things um, on these smaller coral heads like little isolated patches that pretty much nobody's finding or hit, hitting and really using the um, the tower on, on, on the 26 to, to run around and just look oh there's a you know random coral head um, and especially if it's surrounded by grass or something like that that seems to be the winning formula yeah I mean we got in there and looking around and sure enough man there's red grouper we followed some black groupers uh, right away Reed nails a black grouper. Yeah, yeah, what's really key with these black groupers is if you try to go do, shoot them on your own, nine times out of 10, 
is as soon as you dive down to shoot them, they see you going down, and, and before you can get in range, they shoot off. And if you're already down there, and the second you come up and get, get a breath, you lose visual contact with them, and they're gone. This one was a little cooperative, and I just laying there in the open, and Reed, Reed dives down to him. I kept waiting for the fish to shoot off, and he got closer and closer and closer, and finally he got <laughs> into kill range. And just I saw that gun, poof, he shoots, and he hit that guy, and he just was, poof, one quiver and done. He got him. He got him. Right on, Reed. Good work. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Reed, he is all about it. And I think that if we just forgot him and left him out there, he'd be fine. <laughs> he'd still be he there, would yeah. just He would just swim around in a circle until he got his limit. It's just cool to see, you know, that he's, he's all about it like that. But black groupers, red groupers, and mutton snappers were kind of the target. Mutton snappers, which are a lot of those around the grouper, um, sometimes yellow jacks um, are, the, are the main target. And then we'll see some mangrove snappers too um, in certain spots. Good work. Oh yeah. 20, 28 and a half. 28 and a half, nice job, dude. Stoned him, boy. I'm enjoying watching Reed shoot him. You know, I mean, he's getting such incredible pleasure out of it. And he knows, like, on this next one, that's where the big one was. And on this one over here, <laughs> in two more spots, that's where the big one is. And I'm like, man, I do not want to shoot the one that you've been staying up late at night <laughs> dreaming about. Like, I don't want that one. I, I'm fine with any but I definitely don't want the one that's been keeping you up at night because he's like, I was been thinking about this one. It's like a mushroom shaped head. And then there's this big black grouper under that. I definitely want to shoot that one. I'm like, well, I would never want to shoot that one. That's yours. You need to get that one. And so we get to the first spot and it's like, I can clearly see that there's a couple of reds down there. And, and uh, I'm looking at Reed and I'm like, you know, legal. And he's like, you get him. <laughs> like, you're good to go, man. So I go down there, and the really nice thing about where you're doing this is that it's not super deep. Right. Yeah, I'm in really good shape, but I don't do a lot of spear fishing. If you're asking someone to go to 60 feet for the first, you know, most experienced spear fishermen are like, yeah, anybody can go to 60 feet with some training and all that. But where you are, it's like 12 to 20 feet. That's like a swimming pool. And I'm pretty comfortable in the water. And, you know, I, I get down there and this thing is not going anywhere. Like, I'm like, are you sure that's the one? And I look over at Reed and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's him. <laughs> I'm like, man, he is not going anywhere. So it was not super challenging. Like, this guy was very, what you called, user friendly. He just sat right there. I almost put the spear gun right next to him and just pulled the trigger. And uh, there you go, first red grouper. Um, and, and it was really it was really fun. Yeah, that but was I a like... good that was a good size red. You get him? All right. Nice job, man. Nice. Bring him over here quick. That's awesome. I like the hunting aspect to it. I like snorkeling on the top, seeing them, getting ready, and then you see them come out, and you're like, okay, well now's my shot. You go down and shoot that fish, and you don't have to be down there very long. But it's fun. I mean, that's, a, that's really fun. And to do that, as opposed to the rod and reel fishing for a day, it's awesome. That's a good one, man. Woohoo! That's a nice red. That's like 20, 24 inch or more. Nice job, dude. That's awesome, man. Great eating. Further north is known as the dive capital of the world, or they're certainly the Keys. And um, you know, the, the difference there is just water clarity. It's um, consistently clear. Here we'll have days, you know, at a duck key where it's really clear, but then the wind blows out of the bay and uh, some dirty water gets out there. And the same reef you were diving yesterday it had great visibility, now it's a little dirty. Now that's really good for the fishing. Those nutrients are great for all kinds of fish, and it's easier to catch them on rod and reel with, with dirtier water, but it's uh, it sure is prettier to, to be in that clear water. Yeah, and it's not even necessarily like dirty water. It's just has some sediment in it right. coming from the, the bay and it's just water with sediment. Yeah, and, that, and that current flow that we have with all these bridges 
that makes the fishing so much better for the tarpon. That's why there's such great tarpon fishing right here. That's why there's so many other species that are, that are, that are great. Uh, but that water flowing back and forth does hurt the water clarity. And then also the coral growth, you know, that clear water, the coral grows better. So there's some of the premier coral reefs right up there. Um, and it's not a, not a far drive. I mean, if you want to really get into some premier diving, you know, a little further right up the road um, to the north, there's some great spots. Here.